Hi there, my name is Wendy and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a slip knot and how to make a crochet chain. I'm going to be making two versions of the slip knot for you. The first version I'm going to make on a flat surface so you can see how a slip knot is constructed and then the second version I'll make by wrapping that around my fingers. When it comes to making our crochet chain, um, I'm going to show you how to make your chain by taking the yarn up and over the hook initially and we'll get used to making the chain that way before moving on to the um, traditional yarn over movement. That's because when I teach live workshops I find that it's easier sometimes for newer crocheters to get used to that movement first, especially if anyone's got any dexterity problems. After that we'll count our chains and then we'll take a quick look at both the crochet terminology and the crochet symbol for the chain. If you are right handed you're in the right place but if you're left handed I'm going to put a link in here for you and in the notes below to take you to the right video. So for now I'm going to bring the overhead camera in and uh, we'll take a look at making the slip knot. When it comes to making the slip knot, I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you making one on a flat surface so you get the gist of what it is that you're actually doing. And then I'm going to show you making one round my um, first two fingers, my forefinger and my middle finger. So I've got my yarn laid out in front of me and my tail end is here and this end of yarn is going to my ball of wool. So I'm going to put my finger down just to secure it in place. That's about um, five inches away from the edge. So that's 12 to 13 centimeters. And then with my other hand, I'm going to make a loop. Okay, so this end of the yarn is leading to the ball of wool. And the object of what I'm trying to do is take my thumb and my forefinger through that loop and then I'm going to go under this little section of yarn here and grab this section of yarn. So my forefinger and thumb go under. I grab that yarn and I pick it up. And as I pick it up, I can hold on to my tail end that I was holding down in place. I can pick up the end of the yarn that's leading to the ball of wool. And then when I pull in separate directions, I then get this flexible loop. So that can now be adjusted to sit on my crochet hook. However, by making it this way, I've got rather a long tail end. So if I'd made my slip knot on the flat surface like this, I would cut this off about four inches, about 10 centimeters, so that I'm not going to get confused with my working yarn that I'm going to be crocheting with and my short tail end here. So to now go on and make the slip knot around my fingers, I'm going to lie the yarn across my hand and the end of the yarn is going to come to the outer edge of my hand by my little fingers. And then with my thumb, I'm going to hold it in place to my forefinger and I'm going to wrap it around my forefinger and my middle finger and create a loop. And I'm going to hold it down. I've got this cross here. I'm going to hold it in place with the cross. Then I'm going to wrap it around a second time lower down and hold it again with my thumb. So my first loop is the upper loop and my second loop that I made is the lower loop. Then just like before, I'm going to take my thumb and my forefinger, but this time I'm going underneath the top loop and I'm grabbing the bottom loop and pulling it up through. And there we go. We've created a slip knot around our fingers. Again, we've got that nice adjustable loop that can just sit on our crochet hook. So we're ready to make our chain. So when it comes to making our chain, we've got a few things we, that we have to deal with. It can feel all fingers and thumbs. So I'm going to take you through it step by step very slowly. So first of all, when we're looking at the hook, Think of the hook, this sounds really daft, but think of the hook like a toothbrush and have the hook looking at you as if you were going to clean your teeth. Then with the hand that's holding the crochet hook, pop your forefinger on that stitch about two centimetres away from the, the top. You don't want the stitch right down here and you don't want the stitch right up in the 
in the um, throat of the, the hook. You want it just sitting about two centimeters in. Okay, and the movement that you're going to be making is called a yarn over. And the reason that you want your finger on the top of the hook is to stop the stitch from spinning. So I'm just going to show you a yarn over. It's coming up the back of the hook, over the top of the hook and down the front. Okay, so I'm going to do that once more. Up the back of the hook, over the top of the hook and down the front. However, if I don't have my finger on top of that stitch, it's going to spin. So while we can, we support that stitch. So the next thing we need to do now is think about where we're going to have our yarn. So we've got our finger on top of the hook and we've got the hook looking at us as if it's a toothbrush and we're going to clean our teeth. I'm then going to take my hand underneath the yarn and up under the hook and then just clasp it gently. Okay, so I'm going to let go with my thumb and forefinger so that my yarn is in the bottom three fingers, but I want to make sure that I keep my yarn as close as possible again to the hook. I don't want my yarn down here because then I won't be able to have any control of making the stitch. So keep the hand underneath the yarn up as close to the hook as possible and then just grasp gently and then let go with the thumb and the forefinger. That way we can now manoeuvre the yarn over the hook and we can hold the stitch under the hook. So we're now going to take our yarn up over the top, across and down the front and then we can let go with our thumb and our forefinger of the hand that's holding the yarn and we can just grasp the bottom of the stitch that's on the hook. So now that we're grasping it with this hand, we can let go with the finger that's holding the hook. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to pull that hook back through this stitch. But if we just pull it back as it is, it's going to get caught. So we want to turn the hook downwards and we want to scoop it as we take it through. And you can just gently pull this little stitch down just to make it, um, give it a little bit more room for the stitch to come through. So I'm going to take my hook downwards and I'm going to scoop it back through that stitch and I've made one chain. So I'm going to put my forefinger back on top of that stitch to support it on the hook. I can let go with my thumb and forefinger and I'm still holding the yarn in the bottom three fingers. I can take the yarn up the back, over the top, down the front and then I can grab that little chain, that chain stitch that I just made with my thumb and my forefinger of the hand that's holding the yarn. My hook is looking at me like a toothbrush but I'm now going to turn it downwards as if it's an ice cream scoop. And I'm going to give that little chain a tiny little tug to open up the area and scoop that stitch through. So again, with the hand that's holding the hook, I'm going to put the finger on top of the hook to support the stitch. Then I can let go of the stitch under the hook and I can take my yarn up over the top, across, down the front, grab that yarn and then I'm going to turn my hook downwards and scoop it back through. So I'm now going to do this once more, taking the yarn up the back, over the top and down the front, and then turning my hook downwards and scooping it back through. So it's now time to look at the yarn over movement in a quicker way. You can carry on with the way that I've just shown you, that's absolutely fine, or you may find now it's easier to take your hook under the yarn from the front and then taking it up behind the yarn and you've created the same effect, you've created a yarn over. You can then scoop that back through and you've made another chain. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take my hook and take it in front of the yarn, underneath the yarn and then up behind the yarn creating that same effect. If you look, you'll see that your yarn is now coming up from the back of the hook, across the top and down the front, creating that yarn over, or as I call it, yarn over the hook. 
So whichever way you feel more comfortable doing is absolutely fine because it still creates the same effect. When it comes to looking at your chain, you'll see that there's a series of Vs along the front. Each one of these Vs represents one chain that you've made. And when you look at the bottom of the chain, there's a tiny little knot, and that's the slip knot that you made at the beginning. So when it comes to counting your chain, you don't include that slip knot, that tiny little knot at the beginning of your chain, and you don't include the stitch that's sitting on your hook. When you turn your chain over, you'll see a line of vertical bumps going down the middle, and that indicates that that's the back of the chain, and that's called the back bumps. If you take a look at the picture to the side, you'll see that the word chain is abbreviated to the words CH. This is exactly the same for both UK stitch terminology and American terminology. The symbol for a chart for making a chain is this little oval shape, which is like a little grain of rice. And each little oval shape, again, represents one chain made. So I hope you found that useful and um, it's given you an insight to making a slip knot and crochet chain. So thanks very much for joining me. Happy crocheting and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.